Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a special video for you guys. We are going to be playing as an Eastern character, this wonderful Gregarious dude over here. We are surrounded by pretty big nations all around so this is going to be an interesting start. So let me explain the goal for this video. So firstly we are going to be reforming the Kingdom of Himalaya. We are also going to be forming a hybrid Himalayan culture from the Nepali and Kirati cultures. Now let me give you guys some context about the history of Nepal so that you guys can follow along as well. Firstly, Nepal was ruled by the Kirat dynasty, then came the Limbuban dynasty and lastly came a guy who is seen everywhere with his index finger pointing to the sky. Jokes aside, Prithvinarayan Shah was the one who managed to unite all the broken lands into one unified Nepal. Fortunately, as we cannot play as Prithvinarayan Shah, I thought the next best thing would be to play as a Kirati ruler and rule over the Kingdom of Himalaya. Our first order of business is our council. Seeing as we could use an upgrade, we decided to diplomatically kidnap ourselves a steward, a marshal, and a knight. Then we had our court chaplain fabricate a claim on Dharamdin. It seems our character filled this theologian dream, so we decided to take the scholarship focus. Another reason I wanted to play as a Kirati ruler is, as you can see, they have holy sites all over the kingdom of Himalaya. So we will definitely be holding these holy sites ourselves and are definitely building grand temples in all of these holy sites. Looks like our shaman uh, successfully fabricated a claim in Dharamdin. We betrothed our son to this wonderful girl, getting ourselves a strong ally. We then decided to um, press our claim on Dharamdin with our newly acquired alliance. Because they only had around 250 troops, and us along with our ally had over a thousand, we were easily able to steamroll this war even if we were battling on mountainous tiles with them having the defenders advantage. We then had our marshal increase the control in Dharamdin, we then told our lease that we would increase our taxes if he gives us a guaranteed council position, which he agrees. And we are going to be his steward just for that extra flat one gold per month increase and the 10% holding taxes. We have this random event where we pick the wise man trade, have our court chaplain fabricate a claim on the alarm, find out we have been eating a lot. We then finally pick ourselves a wife, picked up the scientific perk, and um, our son gets the trade fortune builder. Our coach shaman is able to fabricate the claim on Elam. We then press our claim on our liege with the help of our ally. We successfully win the war for the county of Elam. And with that, we have ourselves our very first holy sites. Unfortunately, we die at the age of 55 due to natural causes. We went ahead and chose the scholarship focus for our new character as well, just to get that restrained perk. Because we were the only Kirati ruler, we became the cultural head and decided to research crop rotation so we could build our grand temples when we have enough gold. Our neighboring ruler died, so we were able to capitalize on this by plotting a murder scheme against the new Raja. We then got ourselves a new wife and successfully murdered Raja Tharmapal, which led to this 13-year-old in charge. Finally, we had found a new artifact to add to our collection. Unfortunately, the young ruler died, so this 49-year-old uh, lady was appointed as Rani. We plotted yet another murder scheme, this time to kill her husband. We actually managed to kill her husband, which meant Nepal was up for grabs. We managed to save ourselves enough money to create the duchy of Limbovan. Finally, we constructed our very first uh, building, the forestry. And would you look at that, after four daughters, we finally have ourselves a son. Now we can embrace celibacy at peace. I decided that before Nepal could form any more alliance, it would be better if we take it out, so we declared the war for Bhaktapur. As we outnumbered them by quite a lot, we won the war with ease. Sometimes later, we unlocked the crop rotation, which means we should be able to construct our very first grand temple as soon as we have the money to do so. We declare our final war with Nepal for the county of Kathmandu, after which we had successfully taken all lands from Nepal and with that have our second holy site. Similar to before, the gap in power was just too great and we easily took over the county of Kathmandu. We finally now had enough gold to build our very first grand temple. Our grand temple was successfully constructed. We then went ahead and raided our neighbors, giving us some 
easy gold and prestige. We then hopped onto the cultural path to form the hybrid culture from Nepali culture and Kirati culture, with which we would have discovered four new innovation. We formed the hybrid culture, giving us the new pop-up to a new age, a new era, a new people. We die at the age of 69, but now that we are young, we can start being religious enough to reform our faith. So we choose the scholarship focus once again because this character is a mastermind philosopher who should be getting lifestyle experience quite easily. We then decide to head on a pilgrimage. It looks like our character is depressed, so we are going to marry him, a sweet and wonderful wife who can look after him. Uh oh, we have 6,000 troops raising a war on us for the petty kingdom of Nepal. So we try utilizing our spare half sisters to form a powerful alliance. We manage to keep catch them on our capital and look at those battle rolls. For some strange reason, they came one stack at a time and died. With that battle, we have around 5k troops and they have around 4k troops. And would you look at this, they had a thousand more soldiers than we did, but lost twice as much more men. Our wife finally blessed us with a daughter and our new heir. And with that last battle and some ticking score, we win the war, which resulted in us getting 200 golds. We declared the war for Joomla, our next holy sites, because they were weakened from attacking us earlier, they couldn't really defend themselves properly, and we also managed to outseize them and won the war with ease. We constructed our grand temple in Kathmandu, then we finally had enough piety to reform our religion. Now an interesting thing about being the head of faith of said faith is that if you have the communion tenant, people can ask you for your indulgence in exchange for money. We then head on constructing different buildings, I'll make a small montage of us upgrading and building everything so enjoy. After that, we recruited some pikes, which are cultural exclusive bowmen's, and finally decided to declare a holy war for the neighboring duchy. Now at this point, they were really weakened from our earlier wars and couldn't resist being conquered. We finally have some vassals seeking indulgence, and with this money, we can create the kingdom of Himalaya and get to see our royal court for the first time. I kinda hope someday Paradox changes it so that you don't really need to be a king anymore to finally have your royal court. Anyways, we display the two banners in our court, giving ourselves some decent bobs. Declare a holy war for the Kurmanchal Raz. We had five times as more troops as they do, so we managed to steamroll the war and finally unite the kingdom of Himalaya's border. Right as we united the border, we died of cancer, leaving us with this 31-year-old lady as our ruler. Anyway, we have finally done it. We formed the Kingdom of Himalaya. I hope you guys liked this campaign. If you did, make sure to drop a like and comment below where should I play my next campaign. See you guys around.